Studio. I'm Dave and in this video we're going to take a look at suspended chords. Suspended chords are quite interesting, they're not particularly complex uh, but they've got an interesting sound and they're useful to have in your vocabulary and something you can use in your own chord progression writing and composing and whatnot. Now if you haven't done any chord construction theory at all you might get a bit, like, bit lost off with this so I'd recommend you go back and have a look at the music theory uh, playlist on the YouTube channel there, there's some other tutorials, there's one in there that covers the basics of chord construction, so have a shuffle of that first. If you're already familiar with the basics of chord construction, then let's dive into this. Very, very simply, when we construct a chord, if we think about the simplest chord, a triad, we've got three notes in it, a first, a third and a fifth, so we start on the root note of the chord and then take alternate notes, so we'll have some sort of third, well, it's either a natural third or a flat third, depending if it's a major or a minor chord, and a fifth degree, usually a fifth, but sometimes we might get a flat five if it's a diminished chord or a sharp five if it's an augmented chord. Anyway, that's the basic idea of a triad, simplest chord we can get, three notes in it. Actually, there is something simpler than a three note chord, it's a two note chord. And what we can do is we can take out the third degree, or we can say we suspend it, and we end up with a first and a fifth. That's a, actually called a dyad. Di meaning two, it's only got two notes in it. And you'll have come across a dyad before, I'm sure, because it's the basis of a power chord. You know, if you've got a, a root note and a fifth, put those together, power chord, yeah. And technically, that is a suspended chord. Just taken the, the third degree and suspended it. But where you will see suspended chords more commonly is where we add in a second degree or fourth degree, so the so-called sus2 or sus4 chord. So take the sus2 example first. Let's start with a, so let's say a, D, a D major chord. We'd have a D, an F sharp, and an A. A 1, a 3, and a 5. Now we're not going to have a, a, an F sharp here because there's no third. It's a suspended chord. But the second degree of D is E. So we have a D, an E, and an A. A 1, a 2, and a 4. That's the formula of a, a sus2 chord. Right, now the secret to having a good chord vocabulary isn't so much knowing loads of chords, this might sound a bit, a bit like a paradox, but the secret to having a good chord vocabulary is understanding some music theory uh, so you can take stuff that you know and you can adapt it. And this is a really good example. You may not know, as part of your, your vocabulary now, you may not know sus2 and sus4 chords, but if you know major chords and you understand the theory of what notes are in those chords, you know how to adjust them and come up with a new type of chord. So I, if I say we're, we're playing a, so I just play the D, D there, didn't I? So a D major chord, you can think of this shape here. Now if you look at the notes involved there, you know which one of those is the third degree, the F sharp, so that one there, had the seventh fret on the second string. We don't want an F sharp, we want an E. So the natural thing to do is to take that F sharp and drop it by two semitones down to the E, the fifth fret on the second string, and it gives us a chord shape like this. And that's a D sus2, formula one, two, and five. And as you can hear, it's got a distinctive sound compared to the D major chord. sus2. So that's sus2. Going back to the major chord like that and we say well another type of chord is the sus4 where instead of playing the third degree we play the fourth. So again we go to a shape that we know that D major chord and find the third degree the F sharp here at the seventh fret on the second string and where is there a G that's handy well just semitone up from the third degree is there, there's a G there at the 8th fret on the 2nd string. No other F sharps in the chord, so just play that shape. That is a D sus4. So that sus4 chord has got its own distinctive sound. Uh, probably the most famous example of a, a D, uh, D sus4 chord, and this will get me a copyright strike from, uh, from YouTube for playing somebody else's music, but uh, you'll recognise that from Queen. Yeah, it's four chord. 
Okay, so there's a major chord and we altered it to get a sus2 or sus4. So there's, there's two new types of chord for you. Now we started with a major chord there. Uh, we could actually have started with a minor. It makes no difference because there's no third degree in there. It doesn't matter if we use a major or a minor. So it's just a one, a five, and a, a, a two or a four to give us a sus2 or a sus4 chord. Okay, so they're the basics of sus chords. What, something else you can do though, and it's a, I, I, it's a chord that I like the sound of, it's the seven sus4. And it would, again, we're doing the same, same thing. We're taking some kind of seventh chord, taking the third degree away and replacing it with a uh, second or fourth. So uh, seven sus2 or seven sus4 chord. Let's stick with, let's stick with D major. So we have that, uh, that D major there. What we want to do is actually come up with a, a D7 chord. That one there. So that's got the formula one, three, five, flat seven. It's a, you know, it's a dominant seven chord. And what I did there was just take the root note of the chord, seventh fret on the third string, that D, lower it by semitone to G, and gives us that chord there, the D7. But that D7 has got third degree in it. I don't want that. I want a uh, second degree set to give us a seven sus, seven sus two. So let's take that third degree at the seventh fret on the second string, take it away to the, give us a second degree at the fifth fret on the second string. That's a seven sus two. Really famous example of this, again, Q copyright strike from YouTube. D sus2, D7 sus2. Uh, what's that? Always take the weather with you by Crowded House. Really nice, interesting chords, quite a rich sound, uh, but not, not super, super complex. So that's 7 sus2. Um, you could also think about playing a, ma um, a major 7 sus2. Now think back to what I said just before. I said that. These chords are neither major or minor because we don't have a third degree to tell us if it's a uh, it's a major chord or a minor chord. Because the difference between a major chord or a minor chord is that the major chord has a, three, a third degree and a, a minor chord has a, a flat third. But if you think about a major seven chord, is one, three, five, seven. If I play a sus two chord, one, two, five, and add in a natural seventh de degree, like that. <laughs> Yes, that's a uh, thing about D major, D major 7, D major 7, sus so 2. Because I've got a natural 7th there, it's different to that 7, sus 2. So there's not really such things as a minor 7, sus 2, because it's got a, a flat 7th in it, you'd call it a dominant 7, you'd treat it as a dominant 7 chord, because that hasn't got the 3rd degree there to tell you if it's a flat 3rd because it's come from the minor or a natural 3rd because it's come from the major. Don't get too hung up on the details. It, it's it just about understanding the notes that the notes are involved, rather than getting really uh, pernickety about the naming convention. Major seven sus two one two five seven seven sus two one two five flat seven. Okay, so that's sus twos. Uh, we do something similar with a, with sus four. Again, starting with that um, that D major chord. <laughs> Go to a D7, raise the third degree up by semitone. This is a seven sus four. That's one, four, five, flat seven. But instead of having a flat seven, I have a natural seven. That's a major seven sus four. One, four, five, seven. And seeing as I've opened myself up to loads of copyright strikes already, let's think about uh, a good example of a 7 sus 4 chord. Um, Walking on the Moon by the police. Yeah, that chord there. 7 sus 4. A 7 sus 4. It's like if you think about an A major chord or an A7, 
then take that third degree and raise it up to a fourth. See that chord there. Another example of that actually is uh, Venus. Anyway, yeah, so seven sus four chord. So there you go, there's a few different types of chord there. Just a basic suspended chord, sus two, sus four, or seven sus two, major seven sus two, seven sus four, major seven sus four. A uh, few examples there. Get familiar with them, like I say, the secret of, of your chord vocabulary is being able to adapt what you already know. So I was just using one or two basic shapes here, but if you've got a decent chord vocabulary of just the basic shapes, you know, you, you, if you've been through like the caged system and you know all the, the different kind of basic chord shapes, look at the notes involved in those and think, well, which of these is the third degree? Where do I need to move it to to get to a second or to a fourth to give me a sus two or a sus four chord? Where's a seventh, you know, where can I get a seventh degree and all that? With the different shapes around the neck, as we've said so many times before, with the guitar, because of the way it's tuned and that, the same thing can appear in lots of different ways and different inversions and so on. So once you've learned one shape, don't think that's it. Always be looking around the neck. Use Fatfish to help you. You can put that into arpeggio mode and it shows you different uh, different chord shapes. So you can use that to help you get a, get a handle on where things are on the fingerboard. So get familiar with how those chords uh, sound and, and where you can play them on the neck and try and incorporate them into your own playing. I really like the sound of 7 sus 2s and 7 sus 4s. They're quite rich um, without having the complexity of something like uh, extended chords. Speaking of which, somebody now who understands extended chords is probably saying, if you're using a 2, why are you calling it a 2 and not a 9? Especially when there's a 7th degree in there, because we'll say once you've gone beyond the 7th degree, seconds are known as 9s and 4s are known as 11s. And Sixes and as thirteens. If you've done extended chords, you'll know what I mean. The reason that for all we've got like a seven sus two of a seven sus four chord, we call it two or four and not a nine or an eleven, is because there's no third degree there. We haven't extended a chord. We're using the two or the four as a, sub a substitute uh, in place of the third degree. But like I say, don't get too wound up about precise nomenclature. It's more important that you understand what notes it is that you're actually playing and how they, how they relate to the key. You know, you can take a, a, a say, a major scale harmonizer in triads, you can harmonize it out in sus twos, you can harmonize it out in sus fours. You can see sometimes we need to have a flat two or we need to have a sharp, sharp four, depending on what degree we're on. And likewise, you could harmonize it out in seven sus twos and seven sus fours. So you can see some, sometimes we have a, a major seven sus two, a major seven sus four. So we'll have a, a dominant seven sus two, a dominant seven sus four. Just about having notes that relate back to the key to keep everything diatonic. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. If it didn't, uh, like I say, it would probably help if you go back and you did the had a look at the, uh, the basics of chord construction video that I've already got on the channel. Uh, but hopefully if you understand basic triads and so on, you've been able to follow all of that and it's given you some ideas for things you can incorporate into your playing. Okay, that's all for now. Thanks very much for watching. If you like this, please click like down there. If you really liked it and you want to see other videos that I post on the channel, then please click subscribe. If you've got a comment you want to leave, you're welcome to leave it in the comment section below. But if you've got a specific question you want to ask me, whether it's about music theory, guitar playing, guitar equipment, anything at all, Probably better off going here, filling that form in and sending your question in that way. Don't always see uh, comments left on YouTube videos, but I do always see comments and questions that are sent in through that form. Right, that's all for now. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.